So what exactly is it when we're talking about consciousness? What are we actually talking about? Um, in the philosophical community, a lot of people tend to be talking past each other somewhat. And I feel this is because it's quite an ambiguous term. Um, I think Chalmers' hard problem is more hinder than help, to be quite honest with you. Um, like I've mentioned before, the Elan Vital was the spark of life, but once we'd figured out the seven life processes, then there was no need to even consider it. So I want to try and get a bit of heterophenomenology on the go. Um, some tests that we can objectively deduce whether we would consider something conscious. Now, when I'm talking about conscious in this sense, um, because a lot of people might subscribe to functionalism or panpsychism, something like that, um, I'm not talking about um, subjective inner experience itself in the way that we think that we experience it. Um, I'm talking about the specific uh, facets of human consciousness. So I want this definition to um, try and take into account most humans from uh, earlier civilizations across cultures, um, but at the same time try and limit um, different sorts of animals. So although yes, we might accept that Nagel's bat does have a point of view, um, we're going to be a little bit elitist in this category and say that it wouldn't quite fit in our definition. Um, in order to ask this question, I want to pose um, another question. This question's always fascinated me, it's sort of why I'm studying what I am. Um, can a machine think? Okay, um, I mean, surely our definition would have to either include or exclude various machines. I've got a few um, types of machines, just to give you some examples. Um, some of them may fit within your definition, and some of them might not do, but your definition has to explain why you've included these. Okay, so firstly, just a silicon replica. Uh, this guy's functionally identical, except his he's not made of carbon. He's got very similar functions, but just made of silicon, but otherwise he's indistinguishable. Okay. And then we move to the next level of abstraction, which is just a parallel um, neural processor. IBM are doing something very similar at the moment, um, but basically having that within a robot, uh, would that be able to be conscious? Okay, then a robotic Turing machine. Now the difference between the parallel distributed robot and the robotic Turing machine is, well obviously our brains are operating in, in parallel, so are we to consider parallelity um, a necessary condition for consciousness, or do we accept the fact that Turing machines can replicate any um, computation so they encompass uh, this? Um, and another thing, does, does the specific functioning of this machine have to be identical, or is it only the in-out responses that have to mimic ours in some way? Um, by this I mean, you know, do we have to model the neurons exactly or can we run the appropriate software which simulates this but in a completely different way? Okay, now taking it to a few more levels of abs ab abstraction here. Okay, uh, just a computer software program. The difference is this isn't actually hardwired in and it's a software program that could perhaps live on the internet or live in a simulated reality of its own. Um, is it important that we actually are embodied in the world? Would that be a necessary condition for consciousness? Um, also, another computer, I don't know who subscribes to Penrose, personally I don't, but um, would a quantum computer be conscious? Um, because some people like Hammeroff and Penrose reckon that um, consciousness is beyond the realms of computation. So if we got a quantum computer then programmed in the right way, then who knows. Uh, finally, just to throw a few of you off a little bit if you're subscribing to functionalism so far, um, a system of cups. Okay, so one man is just manipulating cups in a way that is functionally identical to the 
processing and our human brain. But the thing is, obviously, he's he's doing it quite slowly. But regardless, it's a machine, and if he carried out the same amount of computations in a functionally identical way, then would that be consciousness? Um, does consciousness have any sort of time delay on it? Now, obviously, some of you will have uh, heard of Alan Turing, and it's I think the Turing test was a great step. It was an objective, or seemingly objective method in which we could analyze if something was conscious or not, because as I've said before, the hard problem is a misconception. So if we challenge the easy problems and try to figure out what are the necessary conditions for human consciousness, I think we might make some progress. Um, just an example of why the Turing machine might be a little bit inadequate at this. Um, there was a there was an academic not long ago, uh, this was in Scientific American, I believe, but he he was chatted up by this spam email, and he, he was sort of getting into it, and it turned out that it was just a, a piece of software, an automated bot. That would have been reasonably funny in itself, but what makes it funnier is this guy was actually a judge for the Loebner Prize which is, he's basically an expert at trying to distinguish what's um, human and what's a computer simulation. So, I, I mean, as artificial intelligence progresses, I think we need to move the goalposts a little further back because um, AI programmers have figured out ways to manipulate and exploit, exploit very easy tricks. Um, which don't really rely on the... Um, they're, they're not too good at ambiguity though and they're not very good at um, you know pragmatics or pattern recognition usually they're, they're just plastering about pre-written phrases or using keywords building up databases and making logical inferences so we're pretty much at the stage where we can program something to pass the Turing test um, so I think I think it's sort of demonstrated that it's inadequate to explain what it is that we mean when we're referring to human consciousness. So I reckon sort of bounce a few ideas around and let's try and figure out a method for heterophenomenology. Let's take this consciousness term back because um, I feel it was somewhat taken from us by Chalmers. So. If anyone like to discuss this, I encourage you to post a video response, let me know your thoughts, and I'll get back to you with some of my opinions. Peace.